Now, when we do this, we should consider one thing, because before, when we did the global model, we had n degrees of freedom. Now, in this case, we have some weights that we add in there. So we call that the total memory of the system. So it's a measure of how many observations we essentially use in our modeling, where we previously just use lambda equals to 1. And therefore, well, if you calculate this, it becomes an n. So we also need to do a variance estimator. And there are many ways of doing this. So one, given a model, estimate here theta n at time n. We can take the vector of all the y's, just like in the global trend model. And we have a matrix xn here that, say, for the local linear model, is a column of ones. And then it's a column of the time difference between starting with a 0 at the last row and going backward up to minus n minus 1. And then we have the weights with the 1 over lambda to the correct power in the diagonal. Then we have the same term as before, the prediction errors. And then we normalize by t minus p. Before we used n, but now we essentially have less observations. So t minus p is a good estimate for what to use. Of course, then we also need to restrict t to be greater than p, which is not always the case. So this provides a restriction on the forgetting factor that we can use in practice. A method will work for lower, but you can say the un un interpretation of the variance will not work in this sense. Then you need to use another estimator. So what we did, going back to the same example as for the global model, we have six observations here. What we want to do, we want to look at some observations. We have the design matrix here. We have some parameters that we want to estimate. And we're using the linear model. This is what we did for the global model last week. We have this f6 here. We have h6. And we can estimate where we are. So far, so good. Now, this was what we did again last week. We then took that estimate and defined our prediction, just a straight line predictor, just like we have over here. And then we have a least square estimator. Last week, I used n as here to get our estimate of sigma. And then we can make the prediction error and the variance of that for an L-step prediction error in the usual sense, pretty much the same way as when we did the global like general linear model estimator. And now, this was just a particular example for doing a one-step prediction with the following variance. And we can make a prediction interval as well. So that was what we got. But now we want to do the same thing. First, yeah, well, let's just plot it here and show a, an interval here indicating the uncertainty. This is the standard error. Now, what we did also was how do we update when we got a new observation, 3.5. We need to add something to f here. We need to update h as well here. And then we get a new estimate. Then we can add the green line here to show the trend. And since the observation was below, that means that, as it was the case here as well, what happens is the slope is also turned a little down. So we get an estimate there. Now, what if we want to do this locally instead? In this case, just using a lambda of 0 0.9, we can, in this case, we'll just pre-calculate f6 for once, and we get an estimate that is fairly close to what we got. So 3.85 and 0.3 for the slope. 3.85 and 0.3 for the slope. So they are fairly close. But also remember that what we used here 
is a lambda of 0.9. So it's effective total memory is 10 observations, 1 divided by 1 minus lambda. And our estimate of sigma is roughly 0.5 square, uh, 0.5. So the one step prediction error of the variance of one step prediction is 0.7 square. Now, if we take the global model from before to, do, to look at that prediction and we compare with the local model, well, we get almost the same. You can say, why is this double a little bit different? Well, that may be because these observations down here has less weight. Now, how do we, when we look at the estimator for theta n, then we can just do everything that we did. But we have to be careful when we look at sigma square, because the local trend model does not assume that the epsilons are identically independently distributed. We, it's just a filter that we run through the model. If it is the case, well, things are more well behaved, but we have to take care of that. So what I showed you earlier on was this particular notation here, where we use t to correct for the fact that we don't have n observations, but we have effective t observations. This is a local estimate because it's only based on the theta n here. So it's an estimate of the uncertainty when you're at that particular point in time. An alternative is to do a global estimator. This expression is a little bit more complicated as such. What we do is that we start off, as I said before, we should don't make an estimate of the parameters until we need to have a few observations. So we have a burn-in period, lowercase n here, where we do not care about this. Then for each in this case, one step prediction, we could make it L step predictions if you wanted to make it more general, but we just want to estimate theta and why not just stick to the lowest lag that is sufficient. So let's look at the one step prediction error. And then we should remember that the variance of the one step prediction error, if you go back here, we have it down here, that variance is sigma square times 1 plus f transpose 1, uppercase f 6, as in n, inverse, times f 1 to get, again, the one-step prediction. So what we want to is to estimate sigma. So we should take this here, this scaling parameter, whenever we look at prediction error out here, we should scale with the relative variance that we have here. At some point, this which will become constant, but it is not initially. So if we don't normalize and just look at the one-step prediction errors and just divide by how many elements in the sum, then we have not corrected for the fact that we're making predictions and prediction intervals prediction intervals becomes Whenever you, if the further you go out, the wider they become. So the variance at time n is smaller than the variance at time n plus 1. And that should be taken into account, which is what is done down here. In a moment, I will illustrate this with an example, but that's just to underline. What I will try to do is I will ignore that what is the denominator in this equation and see what happens to the estimated sigma when we do it like this. And just again to repeat, the first n observations of prediction errors, they are ignored to stabilize the estimator. And we do norm the prediction errors with the relative variance inflation due to the prediction horizon. But before giving that example, I just want to test. So this was a plot from before. Now, given an observation at time 7, I've made a 10 different local models predicting 
with the update from using this observation here. And now the question is, which of these models, the green lines, have the highest lambda? Think of that, and then we'll get back to that later on, or as a comment, but do think of that.